Hi everyone, Jordan Goldmeyer here. Have you ever wondered how to scope out an Excel project? I'm gonna show you how. Stay tuned on an all new episode of Excel TV. Hey everyone, Jordan Goldmeyer here. We are back after a small hiatus. I still have a bit of a sinus infection. Now, before we do anything else, if you wanna make sure you get exciting Excel news data tips, all that stuff, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you stay to the end because I'm gonna give you my scoping template. So, why, uh, watch, what we have to, um, watch what I have to say. I'm gonna show you, even if you don't come from the consulting space, I'm sure there's information in there that you could really use to help you scope out an Excel project and make sure that they don't fail. And then if you'd like, you can use my template at the end. All right, everyone, so as promised, I'm gonna give you the five questions you gotta answer before starting an Excel project. So let's go take a look at what we're gonna talk about. So I'm gonna give you three ways Excel projects fail. You probably already know this if you've worked on them, but maybe you really needed kind of an independent expert to tell you, hey, this is how it works, because sometimes that's what businesses need to hear. We already know all these things, but it's nice to have an outside voice say it, all right? So I'm gonna give you the five questions you gotta answer before starting an Excel project. Plus, I'm gonna show you my uh, project proposal template, which you can download. Make sure you stay to the end to get access to that. So look, three ways the projects fail. I'm not gonna uh, linger on this point, but but, the most obvious one is when we have like a technology or capacity focus, right? So we need this type of technology um, and that's what we need to deliver on uh, on what we'd want to build. So for instance, someone might say, look, we really need an Excel dashboard. Well, you we don't really know if you need Excel and you're not even sure that you need a dashboard, right? So what we want to really do, and we're going to get to this in the questions, is trace it to the value. What is the problem we're trying to solve? And then I also think about a capacity focus. So, so many small businesses who if I've helped out say, oh, we're gonna go build this data team and they go find all these people and then they take on a lot of projects to try to solve the problem. But really they're not solving any problems. It's more that the business said, hey, we wanna build a data team and they went out and built a data team, right? But did the data team actually solve any of the real business problems or did they just make things worse? So that's a real question. Um, Many times projects fail because of deliverable focus. So we get obsessed with this idea that, oh, I need a dashboard, I need a report. If only I had this uh, deliverable at the end, well, therefore things would be better. Well, that really focuses on the end product. It doesn't focus on what is gonna provide you value. So that's why we have five questions to help identify that. And this one's easy, right? New is always better. So many people come and ask me and say, can you build this thing for me in Power BI? Because Power BI is the new thing and we're not a Microsoft, or we are a Microsoft shop. We don't want to go out and get Tableau, fine. But as uh, my friend Alex Powers, who runs It's Not About the Cell, Power BI expert, really told me and got me to think about differently is that Power BI is a data compression tool. It really is not designed to be a gimmicky uh, dashboard tool. It's really designed to do a lot of crunching on the back end so it can present it to you very easily over the web, right, across a whole bunch of different customers. So to do that, it's actually scaled back on its uh, visualization and capability offering. A lot of people don't realize this. They think, oh, we're going to get Power BI. It's going to give us everything we were doing in Excel, but better. It's not, right? So to think that new, in this case, refers to a better technology or a better version of Excel isn't necessarily the case, right? It's better in certain ways, but in other ways, it might not be better. That's why there are two different products at this point, because they serve two different markets. So it's really about what is going to be valuable to the customer. So you know, I keep saying customer because I'm a consultant, but feel free to adapt this because I did this same sort of work when I was out in corporate. So here are the five questions that I like to employ as a consultant. Feel free to adapt them on your side. What keeps you up at night? My favorite, favorite question. What types of problems are these? Often I'm answering this myself. Definitely you want to get feedback from the client for that, but that's really something that you need to decide for yourself and come to them. Who do they affect? Who are the stakeholders, the people that you need to help, right? What do they need? They could either be the stakeholders or it could be the client itself. And how will you know when you're better off? What does it look like? What does that improved state look like for you? And how does your tool or product or whatever you're trying to do, particularly with Excel, and as you can see, you can actually abstract this, right? It isn't always about Excel. I use this for any sort of technology consulting. How will you know when you're better off? What does a better state look like? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the heart of consulting. So this is my favorite question. What keeps you up at night? So many times you go sit down with your manager, your client, well, if only we had this, we need this because our company is moving towards uh, more reporting and we want more reports. So that's fine, but what really keeps you up at night? So behind that question, maybe there's pressure from management to say, hey, we need reporting right now, right? Well, does building a new Power BI report do that? Maybe, maybe not. Why do you need that? So 
what you really want to do is identify what are the pain points, the bottlenecks that uh, your company, your manager, your, um, you know, whoever your customer in this case is, even if you're working for a company, they're your customer, right? What is keeping you up at night? So if you can identify these things and then you can take a step back, you can actually build something that's going to solve their problems, right? So from there, what you can do is identify problems, like what kind of problems are these? All right, so I'm going to tell you something that I always use, and maybe I'm giving too much away for, uh, with this, but I don't really care because I want us to all be better developers, right? All problems within this consulting space can be limited or reduced to three different areas. They always cross between these three different areas, right? Technology, operations, and data, all right? If you are doing things outside of that, maybe you're doing a different type of consulting, but for me, that's how I help companies improve, right? So from a technology standpoint, do we have the right technology to deliver on what we wanna do? From a data standpoint, um, is our data organized correctly? From an architecture standpoint, are we looking at the right things? Is it error-free? But I'm gonna tell you, this is even going deeper, right? Technology and data, yes, but operations, that's the real, the real thing that you're solving, right? Everything, virtually everything can be reduced to a workflow issue, right? So why is technology and data not supporting you right now? Why isn't it giving you what you need? I guarantee you it's an operations issue. So what is an operations issue? It means that someone's spending too much time on something, someone is owning something too often, you're doing something the old way, you haven't looked at the workflow process of how one thing gets to another. So most of these problems that they're going to say and what keeps them up at night are going to fall in these three buckets. But mainly, in truth, I almost feel like operations is the, and I love operations, of course, is the bucket that swallows all the other ones. It's the big fish that eats all the others. It's the tide that lifts all boats, right? So you need to put these things in these three buckets. That's what I like to do because I think it really delivers to customers because they really understand that. Um, and many times you're almost re-educating them on what their problem is, and they're very grateful for it. They're like, oh, no one has really put it to me that way. So if you can solve these problems, or I should say if you can identify them in these different areas, rather than say, oh, well, we need a report for this, it's, oh, well, we need a new um, procedure to get this report out, right? And then we can say, well, what does the report need uh, to deliver on what it, uh, to deliver insight? So that's a technology thing, or it's a data thing, right? Do we have the right data to support it? So that's how I like to look at these problems. The next thing is you want to know who, who do they affect. So often uh, a person at a high level is asking for this, but you really want to go dig deeper and say, well, who's going to be using this? Who is going to be developing this? And what do they need it for? And often the person at the high level isn't using the product, but they need it because they have an initiative or someone else on top of them is saying, here's a budget, you need to spend it, right? So you need to find, figure out at all levels, who do these things affect? Of course, even at the person who's asking for this, it definitely affects them. So don't neglect that. But sometimes it's really just about making them look good, right? But really the people on the lower level um, is who you really need to help. And by helping them, you make the person at the top or le top level, you make their life easier, which again, this isn't to insult anyone. This is a very important thing because businesses should run as well-oiled machines using data technology and operations. So identify who they affect. That's very important when you're scoping things out. All right, so what do they need? They being corporate, uh, they being people. So this is where you can actually start getting into a deliverable mindset, right? So sometimes it's dashboards, sometimes it's training, sometimes it's mentorship. Hey, just go in there and say, you're already good at this. You just need the space and room and confidence to get what you need. Um, data visualization is one I'm often asked for. So again, anyone who comes in and says, well, if I only had a data viz, I'd be better off. I say, well, let's answer these five questions and figure out if that's true. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not. But these are just examples. Don't feel like you have to be limited. Feel free to be creative in this because you're going to present it to someone and they're going to tear it apart and you guys can negotiate or come to a meeting of the minds as it were um, on identifying uh, what you really need, right? And then finally, the most important consulting question, right? How will they know they're better off? So here's where we can really drive home results, right? So I, I always like to say, I'm going to help you do this. Here's who I'm going to help and here's what the improvement's going to look like. So time spent building reports is reduced from days to hours. If you can quantify this, do it. Often um, what happens is you can quantify the current state, like we're spending five hours a day uh, over a year. Easy to figure that one out. Sometimes you can't really quantify the improvement until you're done, but if you've done work and this is follow-on work, you can always just mention that and say, well, this is the type of improvement we, we were make, we're making, and if the system is deterministic, we should be able to realize similar gains for you, right? So things that you want to reduce Mistakes are often ones that are workflow problems, right? So people say, well, we need a report, but really what, they're, what uh, they're really saying is there's a lot of mistakes in the workflow. So that isn't necessarily requiring a report at the end, right? 
So really try to zero in on how this is going to improve their life, um, how this technology and data and through operations is really going to bring about you know some value to, to, to what they need. So uh, here are just examples. Just think to yourself, how can I help the current state of where I am based off of the questions that I have asked? All right, so really you can reduce consulting down to these five questions, uh, these important questions. So let's go take a look at my... Um, at my template, which you can download yourself, all right? So once I have that um, that information in here, what I usually do is I don't do a big, huge document with like a business case and, um, you know, here's exactly what this thing's going to look like. I don't ever start out that way because it's too prescriptive to start out that way. So usually in the requirements section, I take my answers to these questions. I If I can do it in one paragraph, I do. Usually in two paragraphs, I say, here's your current state. Here is... Um, what you say that you need, right? So sometimes it's not exactly what I think they need. It's what I think they, it's what they think they need, right? So we just start off from, um, you know, point zero. What I don't do in this section is just rehash everything that you can find on the website. Look, they already know that. If you're doing consulting, please don't do that. That's just, it's kind of insulting, I think, to your client to tell them what someone, they've already paid someone to write on a website. Okay, so diagnosis is my favorite section. This is where I'm just very blunt about here's what I found, here's what I think is going to improve you, here are the problems. And then usually um, at the end of that, I write something like, based on my review, on my diagnosis, I describe some options in the next section to help you decide what's most valuable to you. So in the engagement options, I always say, here's what I'm gonna do for you. If it's a, if I, I like to pr always present three options. There's always one recommended option. That's not always the most intense one, but it's the one I think that they need. Um, sometimes they're asking for more than they need. But, um, you know, I give it a name. I describe what I'm going to do. Often I have a delivery schedule. I don't put calendar dates on it. I usually break it down to weeks because at, at this point it's too early to be prescriptive. Now, if someone says, well, I really need like a, here's what I'm, I'm looking at this thing. Here's what the th improvements I'm going to make. I just say, look, you know, that's something that I'm going to deliver to you after the first week, after I kind of do a discovery, but I can't do that level of analysis starting out. That's part of my consulting, right? So don't be that prescriptive starting out because it is going to lock you in and sometimes you just need to educate your customer, your client, your manager on why that's not a good idea. All right, so often I include three types of uh, project options. So I have the recommended effort. Usually I have a larger effort that if they think they need, I'll say, hey, you know, here's the big one if you really want it. Um, and then usually I have a small one because sometimes people just aren't ready yet to pull the trigger. So they want to try me out. If you're new to a company, and you're really trying to like argue to your manager, this is the new way to, to do something, I think giving them a scoping document and giving them options will make them feel very comfortable. And then of course, this is really um, my uh, terms and conditions and things like that. You're free to look at, feel free to look at that if you wanna be a consultant in, in this game um, and use it uh, as you'd like. And I will tell you that actually this type of project proposal was adapted from Alan Weiss's Million Dollar Consulting book. So I really like it. Feel free to go take a look at his book um, if you'd like. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's everything I have for you this week. What do you think about this? Feel free to download um, this uh, this template. Give me your thoughts uh, on how you scope out projects, things you've run into. We're always interested in that. Feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like this video, hit that like. If you think it's useful, feel free to share it. If you want to change your manager's mind, feel free to give it to them. If you need the slides, uh, go ahead and email me, jordan at excel.com. TV. I thank you so much for watching and uh, see you next week. Until then, keep on excelling. Thanks, everyone.